My name is Stanley Sword and I have the great pleasure and privilege to sit here with Ragnar Skånaker and, and to hold your four Olympic medals in my hand. One in gold from München, 1972. One in silver from uh, Seoul, 1988. And one from Los Angeles, 1984, silver. And, and uh, one bronze in Barcelona in 1992. It's, it's, uh, is it like your children or is it like... Uh, your, your, um, it's a, it brings lo out a lot of memories for yes, you. Of course, of course. It's uh, between that, I have had a good life. Yeah. You, 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 I have been, uh, I have been working in uh, as a trainer in about thirty countries, and I have the opportunity to visit one hundred and forty countries, and that is, um, I, I can thank you to to the sport. One hundred and forty. Yes. Amazing, it's uh, it's uh, and and it's like an international language. The bam, the pang. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, when the shot goes off. It's the same all over the world. Yes, it's uh, it's a universal language. And and the, during your you know you, you're one of the Olympians that has participated in, in the most Olympic games ever, seven games, as a, as a Athlete, and then as a trainer in your eighth game, yeah. When you when you um, had an Icelandic guy who yeah. you trained, uh, what's what's the your most beautiful memories throughout all these uh, Olympic games? Uh, it must be the first uh, Olympic games in Munich where I um, picked up the gold medal. Yeah, and in two hours it completely changed my life. Yeah. And, and, and because and that dream it started a few years earlier. Yeah, it started about five, six years earlier. Um, I realized that um, I, I could be good at it mm. if I worked mm. hard. And that means I started um, working, training, five o'clock in the morning. Uh, a bit like Rocky. The yeah, boxer. that's. It's, uh, uh, you're working in your garage. Yeah. You had a gas and, station in, in Munke Jungbe. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's amazing. The, the travel I did, the journey I did, it was amazing because it was fantastic to see the results going up mm. all the time. Mm. It, it, it brings a lot of joy into life. Yeah, and uh, I, I felt. Uh, Secure. Yeah. I feel safe. Yeah. At the competition. And my training score was um, 15 points over my training, my, my uh, uh, let's say, uh, competition score. And, mm. But my training results were so high, so I could um, make a good, uh, a bad shot. Yeah. And win. Yeah. And that was. And what was it that separated you from all the other shooters around the world? Because in those days, shooting was an even bigger sport than it is today, and it was competition from all the uh, military people and so in, in, in Russia, in China, in the U.S. What What do you think that made you the best shooter in the world? Um, I think it was that I was standing on my own feet. Mm. Uh, I paid everything myself, and therefore I want to have some profit out of it. Mm. And that was a, a, a good start. You, you invested in myself. Yeah. And today there's a lot of people investing in themselves with yoga, with healthy food, with, with uh, training, with sleep. Mm. There's like a whole movement of investing in your own body. What, what, what returns can you expect when you start to invest in yourself rather than investing in, in a career serving others, so to say? You feel better. Mm. You have more self-confidence. And you know, you are the boss yeah. <laughs> of yourself. The CEO of your own life. Yes. And, and the, you started out shooting other things. Uh, you were a fighting pilot. Yes, I was. In the a... sky here behind us. 
Yeah. And a few of your colleagues, they fell victim to, to a, a mountain, which actually isn't visible today because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's cloudy over there. But it's called Kulabari. And there were a lot of fighting pilots who, who flew into that mountain and died. Yeah, a couple of them was um, uh, my colleagues mm. uh, from the flying school. And it, it was sad. And uh, also, it was a, a mistake by the uh, leader pilot. Mm. And um, it was so... Um, it, that makes us sad. Yeah. Because mistakes cost lives. And in those days, it was a bit like Enzo Ferrari, who saw his, uh, his drivers as uh, fighting pilots. They, they were... Uh, Death wasn't wasn't so so rare because you, a lot of your colleagues throughout the years passed away. Yes, <clears throat> we had uh, I think we had the worst statistics in the world. We had a less uh, were our statistics uh, was worse than the American had in the uh, the American Air Force had in the Second World uh -huh. War. Uh -huh. We between 1945 and 1985, we lost about 650 pilots 650. in ex in accidents. Yeah, and um, it was up to 1970 before the authorities uh, remarked it. Mm. So we cannot go on with this. Mm. So. Uh, the uh, selection of pilots mm. changed, mm. and that was very successful. What was it that changed? Uh, they more responsible people, or yeah, more responsible, and uh, they looked for people who had more imagination. What can happen the next second, mm. the next ten seconds, so they can look in the future. Was the mistake that, that we developed our own airplanes instead of buying them because we, we kind of become our own test pilots, so to say? No, no, no it has nothing to do with that. Uh, I think Saab made um, very good planes. Mm. So 90% was pilots' fault. Mm. And, and what has you, what, what, what lessons and, and the strengths have you taken from your career as a fighting pilot into your career as a shooter? This focus. Shoot. Mm. Again, focus. Uh, because I, I was um, the right wing uh, plane in the um, group which uh, uh, the Air Force uh, used as um, gun sh uh, air shows. Yeah. And uh, there we have about 20 minutes, we have completely focused. Mm. Uh, the Air Force had uh, three groups. And of, um, out of this group was um, five pilots killed. Ah. So, and then they stopped. And today people seem to have less focus than ever because we, we, we have phones, we have, you know, text messages, we have... We're reachable anywhere in the world, so our focus kind of divides into a thousand things. What can we learn to take control of our own lives today and to, to get focus today in our careers and in our sports? Yeah, we can leave the phone home for some hours mm. and uh, just focus on what we are doing. Mm. Work, family, school, education. Mm. Uh, but when we are doing that, we have to concentrate us, mm. more concentrated. And you took your next step. You went to Africa for the United Nations, flying planes. Yes. Small planes. Yes. Even smaller planes than out there. Yeah. We had uh, two kind of planes there. We had um, Otter and Beaver. We, um, uh, Otter took uh, nine passengers. It was uh, two pilots, and uh, Beaver took four passengers and two pilots. Yeah. But uh, it was all planes, and uh, I must say that um, when we get there, 
it was about pilots from nine, ten nations. But after some months, they didn't um, manage to keep them. The pilots get scared, they um, left, and uh, it was only Swedish pilots left them. Yeah. Because we, I must say, we had the best education. Mm. We could stand it. Mm. So, okay. And and working in Africa, it was you you were under fire sometimes. Yes, but hard uh, conditions. Yes, uh, but we learned a lot of that. Learned to focus on what we are doing, and learn how to avoid things. Mm. Look forward. Um, when you are in a fight, it's too late to get out. It's better not to get into the fight. Yeah. To um, look forward and avoid it. And and you you grew up in in, uh, in middle of Sweden in Dalarna. Yeah. In a in a farmer's yeah. house. Your father was a farmer. Yep. Yeah. So you got into more adventure, a bit like Bigless, <laughs> uh, than than uh, continuing his his work. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, you know. The farmer in Sweden at that time, they could do anything with a string, you know. Yeah. And uh, we small kids, we learned of that. Mm. So um, we uh, we could start anything. Oh. We could um, survive yeah. everything, you know. Yeah. We learned it, and it's not so remarkable. It's just a kind of life. Oh. And and. Um, Flying, you, st- you, you still fly. Yes. Tomorrow you'll meet your fly engineer who's, who's working on your own plane. Yes. And and uh, what what does flying give to you? No, I I feel good of, um, on my own plane. Mm. But it's stupid to have it because it's a more uh, economical to rent a plane for one hour. Yeah. I think... Uh, my flying hours now cost me about three thousand dollars each hour, yeah. and it's stupid when I can rent it for hundred. Yeah, and, and but the feeling to have an own plane is good. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. <isn't> it? <laughs> it's it's uh, it's cheaper when you're in the air force because you're provided with planes and and uh, yeah, it, uh, fuel. <laughs> really, it's. Uh, Two different worlds. In uh, at the air force, when you have land, you write your uh, name in the uh, logbook. Yeah. And also, if something was wrong, a remark. Here you have to. <laughs> with my own plane, I have to uh, take care of the remarks myself. Yeah. And that's now yeah, a pilot need help. And need real you... help. Yeah. In that way. And when you got home to Sweden, you started an ESO gas station yes. in Munkeungby as a 23-year-old yes. kid. Uh, a bit of entrepreneurship. Yes. That, 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 that step into becoming your own uh, employee, what, what made you take that step? Also in the Air Force, uh, we are waiting for the war. We were educated we're still waiting to kill for the people war. in there, and uh, nothing happened. Mm. We, uh, really, it was uh, after five, six years, it was a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. Uh, I'm happy uh, we didn't get a war. But yeah. I think uh, mm, I have to do something, really, so the world remember me. And if I go here, waiting for a war, 40 years, nobody, uh, nobody remember Mr. Skanaker. Yeah. No. <laughs> so therefore I start the company. And, and uh, not in the basement, but, in, but in, the, in the backyard there, you started to train on your shooting. Yes. Uh, uh, you went up early in the morning and uh, you... you Five o'clock in the morning, I start training. At, uh, I went to the range. It took mm-hmm. me only 10 minutes. So. And then back at work, eight o'clock. 
And um, often no lunch, shooting two hours, and then physical training two, three times a week, and um, then training also shooting in the evening. Mm. And um, at, uh, I did it in the winter when every shooter didn't shoot yeah. at that time. This is in the end of the 60s. Mm. And it was completely different. And what made you take that? Did you, did you find a goal early on to take you through that hardship? Or, or when everyone else was sleeping, you, you were awake? What, uh, what drive you? What drove you? They started, I, I want to be, uh, become a Swedish champion. And when I did that, I wanted to be the next step. That was a Nordic champion. Mm. And then um, it uh, rolled on. Mm. The, the more I get, the more I want. I yeah. want to. <laughs> so the, and uh, the training was really hard. But I, I, I wanted something back. And that was gold medals. Were you able to find joy in the hardship, in the training? Because when I'm out running, you know, the, the, the knees hurts and stuff. But when you, once you get home, you feel that uh, endorphins rushing through your body. How, when were your moments of pleasure? Uh, the pressure was to be on the podium, yeah. on the first. But that was seldom. I mean, did you... Did you I, 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 no, I, I didn't enjoy the training. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> it, it was uh, terrible. But when I saw the results, yeah, um, I was uh, pleased. Because you had no trainer who pushed you. No, I've never had a trainer. No. And how, uh, how are you able to lead yourself? If people want to, to lead themselves into a better tomorrow than today. What are the key? Yeah, I had, I, had, I had a schedule on the wall. And then uh, every week I wrote the results, the training results. And uh, if I had a competition, also the competition results. And it was enjoy, uh, enjoy me. I was happy to see that it was better and better and better. Yeah. So I was reminding of the schedule Every day. A positive trend. Yeah. And uh, also I wanted to see how good I could be. Yeah. And uh, you, you really uh, succeeded there because in your first Olympic in München, in Germany, 1972, you got the gold medal. Yes. Tell us about that moment, that journey, that... Yeah, I um... Uh, I was so nervous when it started. So uh, I, I made a very, very good first series. But when I should shoot the second string, 10 shots, yeah. I couldn't see the front sight. Mm. And I said, what, what is this? Then I realized that I had forget to put my glasses on. <laughs> so uh, my eye muscles could stand 10 shots, 10 minutes about, uh, to focus. Uh. But then the eyes was tired. See? And then uh, when I saw that, uh, I make a very good string also. Mm. And then, um, but in the hole, I made a very bad competition. 567, that was a, a new Olympic record with five points. But my training score before the Olympics mm. was over 580. Mm. So I did not, uh, people say, you have no nerves. Oh, you are lucky, you have no nerves. But mm. you, should, you should see, you should understand what's going on inside. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. And how do you handle that under pressure? It's the same thing in the... Yeah, I couldn't handle it really. Because if I could handle it, I should shoot 580. Yeah. So, but... Prepare for war and you'll get peace. If yes. you prepare with, with world-class uh, 
results you get yep. good results yeah and when I set my my uh, the new world record with stand up pistol in korea uh, that was not my discipline but um i was selected and i said i had to do something so the day before i was shooting 10 seconds strings about five six hours mm. just that and focused on that and uh, i thought with uh, let's say 42 points and after six hours i shoot 49 mm. and of course uh, the day after I was prepared. Yeah. So. And in, in München there was a tragedy as well in 1972. Yes. The Israeli was. That was my, team. Uh, yeah, that was my first contact with terrorists and uh, uh, terrible. Yeah. We were locked in and we couldn't get out for 24 hours because we uh, was um, neighbors to the Jewish people. Mm. And the terrorists. Mm. But you had your pistol, so you could defend yourself, at least. You, you chose yeah, the right sport. But, you know, uh, that came so sudden, so nobody was prepared for it. Mm. Like the Eden, Eden paradise turned into hell. Yeah. Very fast. Right. And, and, uh, and because a lot of people, or a lot of people, some people... Got, got to be lucky in life and, and experience one Olympic game. But you are one of the persons in the world who has experienced the most seven games in a row, and then even more as a trainer. Uh, it's like living with a heartbeat. Every fourth year, you you you, you <laughs> go to the Olympics. Uh, what, what, what are the key ingredients there? What, what what have you learned throughout seven Olympic games? It was namely so also, um, this is not a joke, but um, the selling in my company increased every time I was in the papers. Yeah. And the best way to be in the papers, that is to take an Olympic medal. Yeah. So it's logical and easy. Because shooting is a sport where you have to finance a lot of stuff yourself. Yes, the but, ammunition um, from start, you have to pay for it and, and the travels. Yes, but after 1972, the Olympic gold medal, I didn't pay anything myself. No, but you were able to transform the publicity into great business yeah. in, your, in your company. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's like uh, early on PR and, and because today we have Instagram and, and Facebook and all these... Uh, Places where people try to take advantage of their fame, but you you did that 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, so is it. Ahead of your time. <laughs> no, it, uh, it was a nice time, you know. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And how early on in the following Olympics, how early on did you start to kind of super train in order to perform at the Olympics? Because you didn't, did you have the same throughout all the four years or? No, yeah, the hard training was just in the beginning of my career. career. And after that, uh, the training um, was a little uh, less. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I saw my results was going down, I increased the training. But I, I, I want to have the level on the world record mm -hmm. um, position all the time. And then you went to Los Angeles in 1984. It was a special Olympic because they, they had this uh, rocket man yeah. who landed in the arena. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Science fiction and, uh, and, uh, and yeah. sports combined. But it is so. Every Olympic game must be bigger, more expensive than the game before. Yeah. And now we shall see what's ha going to happen in Tokyo, how they finish that. Yeah. And, and uh, because throughout those years that you've been an active athlete, it's, it's been increasing every year. They, yeah. They're pulling more and more money into, into the games. Yeah. And it's been yeah. one of the world's biggest industries now compared to in the 60s. Yeah, it's a, uh, you cannot uh, compare that. No. Um, the Olympic game in London 
you know, you have 40,000, 45,000 volunteers so, came from all over the world. Yeah. And um, it was no problem. It went so smooth, you know. Mm. So, um, so it's, it's been and, a good, uh, it's like just like with your training results, <coughs> it's, uh, the line has been upwards. Yeah, yeah, really. But, but it, it's uh, one thing is um, uh, what happened with the Olympic Games. That is, the focus on security is increasing. Mm. Because uh, every country who arranged an Olympic game are so scared of a terrorist attack. Yeah. And uh, in London, uh, the security was uh. fantastic. Uh. And, and uh, uh, in, in Los Angeles, you won a silver medal. And in, in, the, in, in South Korea, the following Olympic in 1988, you won a silver medal as well. Tell us about those those two silver medals. Uh, what's the difference with them? Or yeah, or your memories from them. How you, yeah, you uh, gained them, how you conquered them. I have no idea. I don't, uh, I don't think I remember so much. I remember the, the finals, but... Um, no, it was nothing about to say. I think, is it, is um, it, when you're in the final, is it because you, 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 you get into that focus, you get into to, uh, uh, the power of now, is it, is it hard, is it easy to, to, you know, to lose the memory afterwards, so to say, because you're yeah. so focused that you don't really experience no, the whole but, thing. Uh, what I can say, with all the Olympics finals I have been in, I think, Ragnar, what are you doing here? You feel so bad, you know. Your stomach is upside down. Yeah. The brain is um, confused. You have to uh, try to put yourself together. Yeah. And um, it should be much, much better to sit in front of the TV at home, have a beer, and look at the guys who is sweating. Yeah, but you but, pushed yourself. Yeah, but after the the final and uh, when it goes very well, you f you feel fantastic. Yeah, I have been seven. I have been in seven Olympic games competing, and I have been in six finals. And uh, after that, feel good. And tell us your specialty, 50 meter pistol. Tell us about, about the, the discipline that you conquered. Uh, 50 meter pistol is the worst discipline you can find. It's so, you have to be so precious. The shots must be so exact. Mm. Uh, with 25 meters, you can shoot the bad 10 with a, a bed, uh, it turned uh, um, a bad um, performance. Yeah. But in free pistol, if you make a bad performance there with a shot, it goes out six times, mm. you mm. know, and you're out. And, and quite late on in life, you, you, you took a leap of faith, so to say. You, you, the gas station that you built, and had run for many years, uh, you left the keys in the door. You still own it and you rent it out. Yeah. And you get a check every, every month, but, but your heart, you lost your heart in the process. Yeah, I still own it and I still live there uh, in my bungalow. And um, every morning when I stand up, I looked at it and said, okay, it's mine. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. That is my, and also that is my uh, pension. But it was a key decision when you when you you saw a car, and and didn't go out to sell uh, uh, a new. I, I remember it was a spoiler or something, because you you took the decision to you know leave the business, so to say, and, and I left to the business. go into yeah. focusing on on pistol shooting 100. percent 
Yeah, I, uh, that uh, depend on. Um, I was uh, offered uh, work in the United States by the Olympic uh, U.S. Olympic Committee. Yeah, and then I said to the guys here, "We have the key. Run. Yeah, run the business." Yeah. And that, how old were you then? Forty-five. Forty-five years. So I retired when I was forty-five, and I could do that thanks to the sport. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and that's kind of following your dream in some sense. Yeah, right. Uh, what advice could you give to other people? There's, there's a lot of people having dreams, uh, but, but not, don't have the guts to take that leap of faith in life. Uh, you know, most people have a dream, but few are able to follow through the dreams. You know. They stand on laying fantasies, the fantasy of what, what to do, but they don't do it. They, uh, they have not the power to make, put in the work, mm. put the focus on it. If you have a dream, I should uh, recommend to try to fulfill it, mm. get it through. And um, if the dream is... Um, Good. It's almost very hard work also to do it. Yeah. And then going to America and to become a trainer because it's one thing to to uh, get up early in the morning to to coach yourself, but it's another thing to to coach uh, other people to make them grow. What, yeah. What what made you into a good coach and, and uh, how were you able to help people? Uh, I teach uh, discipline. Uh, when I started working in uh, in Colorado Springs for the Olympic Committee, I had uh, about ten juniors, and uh, when I served them the first day, we should start eight o'clock. Nobody was at eight o'clock, <laughs> <laughs> and so on, you know. So um, I said to them next day, uh, if you um, not is starting eight o'clock, you can go home. And, you know, they had five dollars a day and the university was free. Yeah. And I should like to see the parents of that guy or girl coming back home and said, I get fired from the school. Mm. Because if they should go to school again, they have to pay. Mm. And it costs a lot of money to go to a university in the United States. Mm. Also, they had free accommodation. Free rooms, everything free, plus five dollars. Yeah. So nobody was late then, mm. and uh, also I changed the school. Uh, we start shooting in the morning, and they get they went to school four o'clock in the afternoon, mm. and uh, that was very good because they was fresh in their mind in the morning. And uh, so they can focus better. And after six months, they were up in the top in the US, yeah. the juniors. Yeah. From the lazy juniors to the sharp juniors. <laughs> and and uh, throughout the world, you, you've been uh, traveling in, in 140 countries. Yes. Around the world. 140. Yeah. It's a lot. Yes. Yeah. It, it's a... Uh, I think I was well traveled, but you're. I have a few years to go, but but uh, it's hard to take in that lead. It's uh, it's like when you're shooting with points, 140 countries. It's it's hard to. No, uh, but it's not so so remarkable. It. I was in the in the Swedish team 40 years, and you know, four new countries every year. Yeah. That makes 160. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's not so remarkable. But but uh, what are the, the the most beautiful places? Where where will if you had to leave Sweden, where would you go? Where where should you live? Um, I have um, two, three, four countries. We have United States, Canada, and Canada. We have Australia, we have Switzerland, and we have Austria, Austria, mm. and also Germany. But um, 
the best countries to live in, perhaps, is Australia. Yeah. But I don't like it because it's so far away from Sweden. Mm -hmm. It takes so long time to get there. And uh, Australia is away from the center of the world. Yeah. And you can see that on the people there also. They are, they are very, very narrow-minded. Uh, and they can do anything themselves. They say, if your house not is paid when you are 50, yeah. when your car is not paid when you are 50, <laughs> when your boat is not paid when you are 60, you are shit. Uh, it's, uh, and um, that's true. That's true. And you, you took a long road trip there just a few, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, and uh, last year you went to... to um, the states and traveled from Los Angeles up to, to Canada. Yeah, a long road trip as well. And you're in your 80s now. Other yes. people they, they check out and they, they you know they sit with a glass of wine and, 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 and retire themselves. But you're still active. You're still pushing new goals, new targets, new dreams. And and uh, soon you're going to the Swedish mountains with your with your relatives. What, what advice can you give to other people who want to, you know, be active when the, as they grow older as well? Yeah, if you, if you think, no, I'm old, you get old. Yeah. But um, I think to do the best every day, and I enjoy the life. I can drink wine if I have nothing to do. I can drink wine and beer, and have a good time. But when I have work to do, I cannot mm. drink anything. Mm. This week, for example, uh, I cannot drink anything, not even a glass of beer, because I have so much to do. Yeah. But next uh, next week, it's different, perhaps. Mm. So you, if you will live with plans for tomorrow, you, you stay young? Yes. At heart? Yes. And, uh, and also, you have to plan for the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I still must have a dream. Yeah. And, and uh, you're a father of four and, and uh, through two marriages. Yeah. And, and you live with uh, more women <laughs> than I have lived with. What's, what's, what's the lesson you have learned throughout a long life of, of, uh, of love affairs, of marriages, of breakups, of... of uh, yeah. Um... A break off from a marriage that's um, that's not good. It's it's a real a small catastrophe. But uh, it's better to break up than to be unhappy. Uh, when you break up, you are sorry for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. <laughs> but then, uh, ah, now I have new opportunity. We start yeah. again. Yeah. Leave it behind you. Yeah. Start again. Oh. And I have done that. Uh, and today you have good connections with your kids. Very good connections. Mm. And uh, I'm so happy that they are he uh, healthy mm. and they are happy. Believe yeah. me, they are happy. And um, they have done it themselves. Oh. And you just spoke to your son on the phone and he's, he's trying to be an a yeah. actor. Yes. Getting into acting school, the highest acting school here in Sweden. And, and his teacher said that you must have inherited some of the focus from your father. The, the other... What are the most important things you can give to your, to your kids? What are the keys you should give them so that they can use in their future? To follow their dream, to try to fulfill them. Yeah. If you have a dream, they, I think all of them have had a dream. They have a dream, they have dreams. And they try to fulfill it. Mm. Mm. Uh, that the intelligence, perhaps they have it from their mothers, but um, the drive to do things come from me. Yeah, yeah. And for the future, what do you think of, of uh, you know shooting as a sport? Now in the Olympics, it's hard to get gold medals because uh, they kind of stripped it free from from the. From, from your disciplines. Yes. Uh, so the records I'm, you have uh, I'm, taken I'm, I'm sorry, to repeat. I'm really sorry for that. And uh, I tried to 
do things to get them to avoid it. But, you know, the answer I get from the president that was, um, uh, Skarnokar, you should focus on the future oh. and not on what has Dwelling passed, on the past. you know. And um, I have to accept that. Uh, and, and how is it to accept change? Because, I mean, you're, you're a veteran, so to say, and then they take your sport away in some sense. Uh, if you don't accept it, you, you, you become bitter and, 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 and resentment for the rest of your life. But, but you're not bitter. How, how are you able to adopt change at an old age? Yeah, uh, this is fact, you know. Mm. And then I have to accept it. And then um, I try to think positive and uh, that they are right. Perhaps I'm wrong. Mm. The, the future will tell us that. Yeah. Because now they mainly focus on, on air pistols. Yes, I can understand that. Because um, the world is more and more crowded. We have 300 meter rifles. Uh, that took a lot of uh, space. Mm. You know. And uh, now they are building house on, on the ranges, 300 meter ranges. Mm. And um, also, the system to focus on 300 meter and air pistol or air rifle 10 meter. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. Uh, if you can be good at 300 meter, you can be good at 10 meter. Yeah. And 10 meter cost. 101 percent of which cost of 300 meters oh. and um, now they took away the 50 meter pistols but it's also the same yeah so you have to be happy with us <laughs> yeah amazing journey warm thank you and the best of luck for your future Einar mm, thank you good luck thank you thanks a lot